is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance, and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we praise you to Allah alone we all praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray none can show him guidance may the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him my dear brothers and sisters welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Huda our phone numbers area code 002-023855132 and the other number is same area code 002 then 0100 uh, actually we're having also two landlines 002 then 0238 or 132 and the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official and Alhamdulillah we're having currently the live uh, broadcast uh, working by the grace of Allah which means I'll also be able to take uh, your questions once you send them to the comment bar inshallah um, the first question is where does the musalli look whenever he is making taslim by the end of the prayer whenever a person is making taslim assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and to the left where does he look? Uh, it's a very valid question because we've discussed that anavaru mawdi'u sujood the person as long as you are in the prayer whether in the standing position or in the bound down position you look at the spot of your prostration. So what about when you have to uh, turn your face and your entire head right and left while making taslim? In fact there has not been any mention or any ahadith concerning where do you look at but the ahadith in this regard describing has how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to uh, turn his head or face while performing taslim Jabir ibn Samura may Allah be pleased with him said I have attended a prayer with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so whenever we used to pray and we make taslim we would wave with our hands like that some people until today they do that so both hands uh, are on the thighs and then whenever you're making taslim to the right or to the left they do like this with the right assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade that and he said ma sha'nukum tushiruna bi aydikum ka'annaha adnabu khaylin shumus what is the matter with you? You point, you wave with your hands like they are the tails of horses. Then your hands should be stand still on your thighs. And he said, فَلْيَلْتَفِتْ إِلَىٰ صَاحِبِهِ وَلَا يُومِئْ بِيَدِهِ إِذَا سَلَّمَ أَحَدُكُمْ Whenever any of you in the prayer, he should simply turn to his uh, companion or to the person next to him. وَلَا يُومِئُ بِيَدِهِ And he should not wave with his hands right or left. Amr ibn Sa'd narrated a hadith which is reported by his father. He said, I used to see the uh, face of the Prophet وسلم, the whiteness of his sheet, right sheet, whenever he would make taslim to the right, or the left sheet, whenever he would make taslim to the left. He would be the Imam. So, in order to see his right cheek completely that means he would turn completely like 90 degree assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah so that those who are behind him will see the right side of his face and similarly once he would make the slim to the left this is what has been narrated so the person would look to his companion next to him and would not wave with his hands as far as the eyesight there have not been any mention or any hadith um, in this regard Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brother Shu'aib from United Arab Emirates Assalamu alaikum Muhammad Salah, how are you? Doing fine, alhamdulillah, thank you brother Shu'aib, go ahead and raise your voice a little bit please 
Uh, can you hear me now properly? Yep. Okay, uh, doctor, I have a question. Uh, I hope I can put it correctly. And uh, the thing is that uh, I am from Pakistan, and uh, we in our cultures, our cultures and traditions, they all mix up with our, you know, Alhamdulillah, I'm trying to learn the deen and religion. And many a times it gets difficult to deal with the family members, like, you know, the brothers and sisters, the parents. And it becomes very difficult, uh, you know, like in our culture, you know, even in our marriages, in our weddings, and on daily basis, we have this, you know, like for example, my my sister or somebody is watching TV, and now I don't like watching them, or if I try to tell them, you know, this is not right, we're not supposed to watch movies, we're not supposed to watch entertainment and stuff like that, it gets very difficult to deal with them. And I feel distant, and they also feel distant with me. It becomes like there is a friction. And uh, also another thing is, how do I, ex you know, try to explain to them about Tawheed? And also one other important thing that has been really disturbing me is that uh, how much do we, as family members, as spouse or as siblings, as friends, how much do we expect from each other as as a creation or as human being? Like. When we say Tawheed, we say we should only rely and trust on Allah. We should only expect from Allah Ta'ala. But on daily basis, when we live and deal with human beings, we say, oh, you did not do this to me. Why should I do this for you? You did not do good to me. Why should I do good to you? And this also creates fiction. Is uh, expecting from human beings, does that also come under shirk? Or how much of expectation from human beings uh, will come as shirk? And, or should we not expect? We should just do our part and not expect anything from our spouse or siblings. We should just play our roles and then just be like, you know, if I'm doing this for Allah Ta'ala, I do not expect any good from you because I have to answer. But if I expect, like, if I expect from my parents that they should be good to me, is that also shirk or is that not shirk? That expectation, is it correct? Is it wrong? And how much and how, how much tawheed, uh, uh, you know, uh, should it... Uh, like I hope I'm trying to explain the question in the right way, and uh, basically that's my question. Uh, how much? How do uh, you know that count as uh, uh, you know? How, as, as basically, do we expect from them or do we not expect from them? And how do we? That's one part of the question. Another is in in a situation like this where your home, you know, your cultures are all becoming barriers for you, and how do you slowly and slowly explain to them? in your family members that this is right or this is wrong, basically. Barakallahu feek, Brother Shuaib from United Arab Emirates. The answer to your question, to your lengthy question, is simply in the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا كَانَ الرِّفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَةٍ A rifq is kindness and gentleness. Once this quality is available in anything, it adorns it, especially uh, while giving da'wah. The meaning of giving da'wah normally is to correct a mistake, to enjoy what is good, to forbid what is evil, and this is the hardest thing on a person to be corrected, whether he takes it personal, whether his ego or her ego doesn't accept anyone to correct them. The don't want anyone to feel superior to them or they're attached to the masiyah or to the sin or to the tradition that they use to do and it is not one time deal and that is the barrier that stands between any human being and correcting himself or herself it stands between any human being and accepting faith or accepting the truth or becoming righteous the personal ego and not willing to change. So that's why these are all hindrances. And the da'iyah, the person who calls people to Allah the Almighty, keeps in mind the following facts. Fact number one. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he's the one who used to receive the wahy from Allah, have been commanded as follows. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ ذَكِّرْ يعني remind, reach, give da'wah. You are just a reminder. 
you have no control over them فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر especially when your sister is grown up she has a husband she has a family and she doesn't want anyone to tell her what to do and you're doing wrong and you're committing a sin normally ordinary human beings would not accept any da'wah this way but the right approach is that when the person is educated about the deen altogether then gradually you bring the person into the pen of iman you bring the person into the area of the greenery of faith of practice يعني, you may have heard many callers saying that particularly after the program of gardens of the pious what do we do in this program we we'll study the book of riyad al-salihin it have changed the lives of a lot of people beginning with myself and my family and uh, those who are around us the crew uh, those who hear these ahadith on regular basis a lot of people used to belittle some sins and they treat some good deeds virtuous deeds as insignificant now they have appreciated the value of that it is a matter of building blocks it is a matter of increasing the level of iman normally whenever a person who is not a muslim for innocence that you tell him anything right or wrong they will reject it because they do whatever they like to do but when this person willingly accepts faith recognizes the concept of tawheed and that there is ilah who is able to do all things and he's the only sustainer he's the only provider he's the only one who whenever i need help i turn to him if i'm feeling ill if i'm complaining about anything i say ya allah it changes their lives completely 180 it does there was an inmate i would like to share this very interesting story with you but after this call because the callers have been waiting for a while now assalamu alaikum Brother Anas from the KSA, and thank you for your patience. Go ahead. How are you, Dr. Salah? Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Uh, I have one question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Dr. Salah, I have a daughter. She is in class two. Uh, she likes uh, this artwork and painting. I can't hear you, Brother Anas. Do me a favor and raise your voice a little bit, please. Uh, my daughter is in class two. She likes painting and artwork. Although she is careful about, you know, drawing pictures and she knows that it's prohibited to draw pictures of human beings, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, she wonders whether, you know, drawing uh, caricatures or cartoons is allowed. Okay, I you guess know, your draw, I guess your question is about your daughter who draws pictures? She, she you know, she likes to draw uh, painting, you know, and she likes this artwork. So the question is whether she can draw uh, cartoons, you know, cartoons are allowed to be, you know, drawn, although she knows that she can't, you know, it's, it's prohibited to make pictures of humans. Can she draw cartoons as pictures, you know? Okay, I got your question, Brother Anas. Thank you. The story I wanted to share with you is about an inmate. Uh, I've shared with you before that for more than 10 years I used to be a chaplain in the US prisons and I used to give da'wah there I have seen wonders alhamdulillah those people who were some of them were serial killers serial killers they have killed many people drug dealers uh, big time criminals I used to visit maximum security units okay and faith have changed them I used to receive certificates of appreciation letters of appreciation from the warden of the prison because those inmates have changed those who accept Islam have become completely different what is the reason one of them have changed his name to Bilal and when he was uh, on parole and he was released uh, he came to a Muslim community and he joined them and now he's broke he doesn't have any money, he doesn't have any cash, and he's supposed to provide for the family. 
he doesn't want to return back to the gangster, to the bad company. He wants to do something halal. So a community member, a Muslim community member, offered him a job in one of his chain of stores. So next morning he went to uh, um, start the job. He realized that in this job he has to sell beer, pork, tobacco, and lot of tickets, a convenience store. This is a revert, a new Muslim who's broke. He just got released from the prison. He has to support a family. And when our Muslim brother offered him a job in his convenience store, he didn't know. When he went to see that in the prison, he learned halal and haram. Okay? So he told our Muslim brother, who was an Arab, born and raised in a Muslim country, then he immigrated. But unfortunately, he is dealing with the haram. What did he say? He said, brother, I didn't accept Islam but to be on the right path. I have learned that it is not permissible to drink and I'm not going to sell drinks. I have learned that it is not permissible to eat pork and I'm not going to sell pork. I was educated that gambling is forbidden and I'm not going to sell lotto tickets. What happened here? Education. Education is the key. I'll continue after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Suleiman from United Arab Emirates. Wa alaikum salam to the American Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, Brother Suleiman. Welcome to the program. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. My question is this. I want to know um, what um, during Ramadan or when one wants to fast voluntarily, at what point is one expected to stop eating? Is it after the call as we made or at the beginning of the call? Call to prayer, I mean. Mm. That's the question for us. Okay, got your question, Brother Suleiman. That's the question. Sir. Thank you. So I want to benefit out of this story and many other stories of the following fact. SubhanAllah, I used to teach uh, the sisters in a private class for the ladies. And once I was speaking about halal and haram and what to wear and what not to wear, there was a, an American, one American uh, girl, teenager, who accepted Islam. And she was working as, you know, she just graduated and, and working as a teacher. Subhanallah, um, she stepped out of the class and she said, I didn't know that I was not supposed to wear those tight, uh, you know, pants. And I, I do apologize. I would never wear them again. Subhanallah, I was surprised that the revert was the first to comply with the guidance with what is halal and haram. And she's ready to implemented to execute the orders immediately they're not my orders they're not my guidance i'm just you know sharing with them what the prophet sallallahu said and there are many many examples in this regard our problem is besides we take islam for granted like we know everything our parents taught us everything and you're not gonna tell us what is halal and what's haram we already know uh, you're not a sheikh to tell us what to do even if you are a sheikh but we have to deal with people as, you know, give them the benefit of doubt. Be very patient with them. They came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to destroy Thaqif, the tribe of Al-Ta'if. We used to throw arrows at them with fire and have hurt many of the Muslims. Ask Allah to destroy Thaqif. He said, Allahum Mahdihim, Allahum Mahdihim, oh Allah guide them, oh Allah guide them. And subhanAllah, after the battle of Tabuk, it was a few months later, they came willing to accept Islam. Um, similarly, uh, at tufail al-Dawsi, uh, who accepted Islam, then he went to his people, gave them da'wah, and they refused. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, uh, ask Allah to destroy them. He said, Allahum mahdi dawsan, wa'ti bihim. And instead of praying against them, he kept praying for them, and Allah guided them, and they became Muslims. So if your dua is effective, why not make your da'wah? Besides, along with giving da'wah, along with preaching and trying to correct people's mistakes, O oh Allah, open their heart to accept the truth. O oh Allah, guide them toward his best. It is not in the form of giving them orders. You guys are misguided. You are on the wrong direction. 
and I have to correct you. No. You say it out of love and forget about asking her not to watch TV now. Make a halqa every time you meet. Let's read some ahadith and from the book of Ariqaq, the book of Ariqaq, the tendering of the heart of Sahih al Bukhari. Or Riyadh al Salihin. Every time they read a hadith, they study an ayah of the Quran. It doesn't only increase them in knowledge, it also increases the level of their iman. So gradually you're withdrawing them from the area of false and errors, from the area of innovations into the area of sunnah, into the area of uh, obedience, into the area of the virtuous deeds and acts. Once you keep yourself busy with what is good, you're distracted from what is bad. And be patient. Allah the Almighty ordered and reminded his Prophet ﷺ with patience, he said, Asbir kama sabara ulul azmi min al rusul. Even though he was very patient, he again ordered him to be very patient. Similar to the prophets of the steadfastness before him, uh, Nuh, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, these prophets have suffered a great deal with their people. Okay? So be patient along with making dua for them. The concept of Tawheed comes first. I bet you. Many Muslims do not know the meaning of the word Tawheed to the point that if you bring up this issue right away they call you Salafi or Wahhabi or because you lived in the Gulf oh you're bringing us a new Islam you know what Tawheed is? That is Tawheed to worship Allah alone yeah we worship Allah alone what about those activities that you do? you go to the pier and you ask help from this and you know uh, all these false traditions have you forgotten your parents do the same thing is it because our parents do the same thing that means it is correct is it because the whole village the whole town the whole country does it does it mean that it is correct one day I made dua for one of our colleagues a doctor who was coming from Pakistan on a green card and he got his residency and he was us he was working with us in, in, in the hospital and I always saw him after I lead the Maghrib prayer he prays the Sunnah while sitting down I assume that he has some arthritis and he's pushing himself to the edge to pray while he's standing in the fard so after the Salah once I said may Allah give you Shifa I said I'm not sick I said okay I see you praying while sitting down I said, yeah, because this is the sunnah, the nafl. I have to sit down when I pray. I said, no, you don't have to. He said, well, my mother and my grandmother say that when you pray, whenever you pray the sunnah, you have to sit down. No, you don't have to sit down. As a matter of fact, as long as you are able to stand up in the sunnah, stand up. If you choose to sit down and you don't have any ache, any pain, any, any problem, then you get have the reward. But in the fard, if you sit down while able to stand up, the prayer is invalid. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بالتعلم. Why do you always assume that everybody should know everything? Everybody they should know what, all what you know because they are Muslims? They don't know. Wallahi, they don't know. After giving khutbah al Jumu'ah once, one sister came to me and she said, that is almost 20 years ago. And she said, this is the first time to know that hijab is mandatory upon all Muslim women. I always thought that it is only for women in the Gulf and in Saudi because it's very hard to cover their faces. No, man. This is something that Allah have ordained on all Muslims. Allah the Almighty said, all Muslim women. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayuha nabiyu قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He didn't only command him to advise his wives and his daughters. قُلْ لِنِسَائِكَ Tell your wives وَبَنَاتِكَ and your daughters وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ All the Muslim women يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِ بِهِنْ To lower their gilbab, their gilbab from Top to bottom. I didn't know that. And from that moment, she started wearing hijab. She used to come 
to attend your prayer wearing those tight blouses and tight pants and you know only during the prayer should wear a scarf alas it's over uh, one sister attended a lecture and she heard in this lecture that mortgage is haram her husband just bought a brand new house on mortgage they've moved to a very big house mashallah nice villa she went home and she said honey I'm not staying in this place anymore I said why not it's brand new she said it's riba and I don't want to enter hell I don't want to ruin my life well who told you that Allah said so okay we discuss this matter and what is the solution he went and he exchanged his retirement plan in in a few weeks he lost 30 percent of his retirement plan and subhanallah he settled uh, all the mortgage he paid fully for the entire house and he got the deed along with my sources and he sent all of that to his wife saying that the house is all used and will not pay in riba anymore ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasanati wajadilhum billati hi ahsan call to the way of your lord with wisdom and with a good reminder even if it reaches to the level of argument then argue with one which is best one day we offered a free clinic in one of the very very poor African countries and myself joined with the best physicians in the country mashallah from one country university professors professors in the medical school mashallah and uh, they do the checkup and we pass on free medications on the patients and all of that lines and lines of people subhanallah you know and even though at, the, at night there is no light we wrote in with the with the light of our phones and this girl came to me and she said do i have to be a muslim in order to be treated it broke my heart i said no ma'am you don't have to be muslim you don't have to accept islam we're doing this freely for everyone whether you are a muslim or not muslim we are serving humanity our word is due with allah the almighty we're not forcing nor tempting anyone because we're giving you the, the, medica the medication that you have to accept Islam. Allah the Almighty have blessed us with many people accepted Islam on that day without asking or ordering or requiring anyone to accept Islam in order to be treated. I'm sorry I took uh, much of your time to answer uh, Brother Shuai's question. It's a very important one. May Allah guide us to what is best. We'll take a short break and inshallah it will be continued in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. come to understand that to be a Muslim to be someone who says they've surrendered and submitted to the will of God is to be in harmony with everything around you and to be a benefit to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator he gave us a life plan he told us what to do he, he gave us you know goals and what he expects from us it has roots in Islam because the first man who was created Adam he was neither a Jew or a Christian but he submitted himself to God Abraham he didn't submit to anyone in creation he didn't even hear in any of these religions but when he was told to do what? Submit to the will of God. That's it's not attached to his preconceived notions. Yes. And if he looks with an objective eye and an open heart, he'll see it. Unless Allah for some reason has something over his eyes because yeah. of something that we don't know is in his heart. Uh, you had from 1980 to 2005, you had the FBI data report showing that now from all these years that only 6% had mm -hmm. any links to Islam. 94% were people who had nothing to do with Islam. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite station, Huda TV. I'm your host, Yusuf Kroma, and today we'll be talking about the very crucial topic of maintaining trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have someone who's a perpetrator in your family, you could encourage him to go to therapy, uh, to seek help, seek help from others uh, like adults in the family who are trusted and they have trusted opinions and they could help them get out of this. So it's not sufficient for a person to utter the words of tawakkul but in reality he doesn't really feel tawakkul in his heart. If a wife lost a husband then it was to, to the son to decide whether she can get married again mm -hmm. or not so uh, it was pretty much just just the men controlling the thing so when Islam came it, it kind of gave the rights and gave uh, the explanation of how of the word family. How did he treat his daughters w when they were in, in a younger mm. age? And I found that there's not hardly anything reported about it. Many people judge Islam based on what the Muslims do. The fact is, Islam is perfect, but the Muslims are not. However, it is not hard for us to implement and there are ways for us to be the ideal Muslims. Join me, Dr. Rayan Arab, in this new program, The Ideal Muslim, so that we could discover the ways of how we could be ideal Muslims. Why are we fighting each other? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. MashaAllah, many questions have been receiving on uh, the page of the live broadcast. Uh, let me tackle a couple of these questions, then I will go back to the callers who just called and uh, left uh, some questions before the break. We have a question from uh, Rashid Sinanu, who says that uh, I know that uh, breaking wind becomes, uh, breaks the wudu, but when I'm uh, re-performing it, do I have to um, go to the bathroom or washroom and wash myself again? No. Uh, if it is only the breaking of the wind, you don't have to uh, do istinja or washing the privates, okay, or the rear office. Only if you uh, do the urination or defecation that requires istinja. But if it is only breaking wind, you can perform uh, as long as you're certain it is just wind, you can perform wudu immediately. Uh, without having to go to the bathroom. Imran Sunusi, Imran says, do we have to recite a verse while praying behind the Imam uh, in one of the silent prayers or should we remain silent after reciting Surah Al-Fatiha? Okay. What is a must uh, whenever the Imam is uh, standing, especially in the silent prayer, is for you as a ma'mum or a follower to recite Surah Al-Fatiha on every single raka'ah. Then, the recitation of a surah in the first and second rak'ah is sunnah. So, when you have a chance, it is highly recommended to recite either verses or short surahs, whatever you can recite based on the time that the Imam allows you to do. So, whatever applies to the congregational prayer applies to the individual prayer here uh, as well. Um, so the recitation of the ayat or a surah after al-Fatiha is sunnah, whether you are an imam or a follower. Uh, but if you are praying as a follower and the imam is reciting uh, in the loud prayer, then you shouldn't be reciting anything other than surah al-Fatiha. Um, okay. Uh, we have uh, Anas from the KSA, I believe. He asked about his daughter who's into painting and uh, we've discussed 
repeatedly before that the Prophet ﷺ forbade the painting or the drawing of the living creatures. Uh, I mean like human beings, like animals, okay, even with some alteration, like, uh, you know, drawing something out of your imagination which have the image of a living creature and in addition to um, other alteration in it, even if it is altered. But if it is drawing only the head or the body without a head or a body part which the person cannot live without, uh, then in this case it is permissible. So only drawing the heads or half of the body uh, in, in the cartoons is okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fatima from Kenya. No problem. Try again, Sister Fatima, please. We should be visiting you in Kenya soon, inshallah. Myself and Brother Sheikh Saeed Raya. Brother uh, Suleiman from United Arab Emirates said, In Ramadan, when do we actually begin the fasting and when do we stop eating and drinking? Uh, is it uh, once we hear the Adhan or in the middle of the Adhan or before the Mu'adhan finishes the call to the prayer? Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا uh, He said in Surah Al-Baqarah ثُمَّ أَتِمْ uh, uh, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ In this ayah, Allah the Almighty ordered us to begin fasting at dawn. He said, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا You can eat, you can drink, and also by analogy, you can enjoy your uh, intimate relationship with your spouse. Until when? حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر. The beginning time of fasting is al-fajr, dawn. So if it is recognized by the alarm, by the clock, by the timetable, or by the adhan, once the muadzin says Allahu Akbar, if you have something in your mouth, spit it out. You stop eating, you stop drinking. And he immediately begin fasting. Why the word hatta in Arabic ghaiya until okay? You can eat, you can drink hatta until the teacher walks in to the classroom. Hatta. Once he walks in, you don't say, Okay, I will just finish the sandwich or I will finish my phone conversation. No, hatta means once it is, then it becomes due to start fasting to stop eating and drinking. What people do, sometimes they eat and they drink, they enjoy themselves until the Mu'adhan is about to finish, that invalidates their fasting. Fasting begins once the Adhan is called, once the Mu'adhan says Allahu Akbar, whether it is a voluntary fasting or it is a mandatory fasting in Ramadan or any other time because of this ayah, حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Then ثُمَّ أَتِمُ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Then you break your fast until uh, you, you continue fasting until the night. Here is something that will help you to comprehend the beginning time and the beginning of the fasting and the end of fasting. When do you normally break your fast? Is it once the Mu'adhan says Allahu Akbar or do you have to wait until he finishes the Adhan? No. Once he says Allahu Akbar, it is the Sunnah to bake your fast. I'm not hungry. Drink water. Eat a couple dates so that you announce that you're not fasting anymore. The Prophet Sallallahu said my Ummah will continue to be in a good shape, in good condition, so long as they haste to bake the fast. Once the Adhan is called, or once the sun set, or once it is time to break your fast if you go by the clock. Okay? Barakallahu um, <clears throat> feekum. Uh, a sister from Gambia is asking that what is the ruling of a woman who has a problem pouring water on her head due to allergies, cold, fever, headache, and finds herself in a state of janaba every fajr prayer. MashaAllah. So, um, I, I'm not going to comment on experiencing janaba every morning, but let's say that it happens whenever it happens. Once the impurity happens, and you must perform ghusl, 
what is the ruling what is the condition perform ghusl but I cannot pour water over my head why not there is something serious what is serious about it if I do I have a head injury for innocence it will kill me it will deteriorate my health uh, the wound will get contaminated the doctor said make certain that the water would not touch your head in this case you should follow the doctor in instruction is it the entire head or just the hair or a part of it why am I saying that these very details are very important because if any body part should not be washed with water water shouldn't touch it then wash the entire body during the ghusl from janaba and cover this body part okay you can wipe over it with your wet hands and also perform tayammum separately so you wash the entire body you wipe over it okay because you uh, you wrap it with a head cover you wrap it with a bandage if it is uh, on your body part and then afterward you perform tayammum bismillah and you do like that that is called tayammum this tayammum to make up for this body part which was not washed during ghusl or during wudu okay but the question is is because I have cold or because I'm afraid that I'm gonna mess up my hair I've done my hair with keratinine uh, 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 or keratinine which which cost me like thousands and the, the hairstylist said make certain that you should not wash it maybe once a month no that's not valid that's not valid al ghusl in order to live the measure impurity you must wash the entire body from head to toe if you don't because of your hairstyle because of the uh, how much you spend on your hair then the ghusl is invalid and you're still in a measure impurity your prayer will not be valid if you do it um, Um Ibrahim from uh, Gambia says I have a problem regarding studies I cannot concentrate at all uh, or would sleep while reading I don't have stress uh, either sometimes I don't understand even if a teacher if what the teacher explains please tell me uh, a dua regarding studies I also listened to one of your lectures um, you said if one fails to plan then he plans to fail uh, I do plan but I end up sleeping when when I say it is true I have mentioned that before several times if if you fail to plan then you're planning to fail is planning is just to do the plan and hang it against the wall no planning means that you've got a plan uh, within your capacity you know that you can execute it it is something affordable to you then you're serious about executing your plan and taking all the needed measures and steps in order to execute it. but when you when the person is making plans before Ramadan a lot of people make plans but from day one they slow down they don't even look at the plan what is the benefit of hanging the plan again as a wall or again as a fridge and looking at it every day you're not serious about it okay you're not serious somebody says that I'm looking for a job I need to earn halal risk and all of that how many interviews did you do one of our students in uh, United Arab Emirates was driving me around for the lecture and back to the hotel and and, and said to me that I've learned um, a big lesson from my uncle one of our brothers also in Dubai was a successful businessman alhamdulillah doing halal business he said that uh, in order to be successful in your life you gotta get up early you don't sleep after fajr this is what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said he said dress up nicely and go out he said but i don't have a job he said go out meet people enter shops uh, um, learn something new offer people that uh, offer yourself to people that are you guys hiring me i have seen that in the states people will just go uh, door to door store to store and offer are you hiring me I'm available I can do this I can do that then one thing would lead to another that's called al akhdu bil asbab you know utilizing the proper means you're able to walk on foot you have some capacity you're able to go to people and 
do interviews and offer yourself or attend courses in order to get certificates and be able to do something to be hired for then you gotta do that if you get up afternoon and you say oh subhanallah I've been looking for a job for two years now oh really uh, are you serious I mean did you ever look for a job I talk to people talk to whom that's exactly similar to somebody who is now 30, 35, and is getting 40. Uh, and and he, he says, I want to get married, but I, you know, I didn't meet the right person. Where would you meet the right person? There are asbab you have to act upon. Talk to people, and talk to the community leader, to the imam, to your relatives, spread the word, whether it's a boy or a girl. In this case, sister, it could be hasad, envy evil eye and subhanallah if you recite the ruqya upon yourself and you start yawning while reciting this ruqya especially the last three chapters of the quran the quls qul huwa allahu ahad qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas and whenever you recite ayat al kursi and you start yawning that's a very uh, serious sign uh, that you uh, are suffering from an evil eye or hasad any time and every time you want your study and your class to be successful we've tried that as long as we were studying alhamdulillah shukla begin your day by reciting quran begin your day by praying fajr before sunrise then that makes your day guaranteed recite your adhkar especially the dhikr in which it says allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan since you asked me for a dua take this dua allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل وأعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال دني ساي يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكنني إلى نفسي طرفة عين Very beautiful dua What do you say again? Oh Allah I see carefully you do against الهم وري الحزن grief Worry about the future grief concerning the past I seek refuge with you against alham wal hazan wal ajz wal kasal the third and the fourth al ajz disability al kasal laziness lousiness because al kasal is a disease and al kasal brings about kasal and the opposite being active brings about activity like the first time you've been saying for years I want to exercise just saying, I want to exercise, I want to lose my belly, I want to lose some weight, will never make you lose weight by mere wishes. What did you do in order to lose weight? What did you do in order to exercise? Take an action. Take an action. Break the ice. Once, take the initiative. Once you do one thing, one thing, it leads you to another thing, and so on. Make an effort. Push yourself, not to the edge, but just to do what you're required to do. Insha'Allah, Azzajal, you will be successful and you will be able to uh, uh, attentive during the class and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach you out of his knowledge. Okay, brothers and sisters, we ran out of time and your questions are very valuable. Insha'Allah, I shall gather all your questions which were asked online during this uh, live uh, uh, session and inshallah we'll answer them in the next episode by the leave of Allah until then I leave you all in the care of Allah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah is my heart's speech your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest.